What I have here is an AMD graphics processing unit. This thing here has a lot of mixed opinions. Some say that it's good and worth the money for its performance, while the others say that it sucks and totally just avoids buying a GPU from this company. See, I was looking to upgrade my gaming PC for a while now to upgrade my VR experience because I just can't run some VR or non-VR games on the highest settings. I just love when a game visually looks great or realistic, but to achieve this goal, we need something powerful enough to run it. And um, my single fan 3060 is not going to be enough. So this is the reason why I and other PC players wants to have a better graphics card. So I know that AMD makes GPUs, but I never really tried one. So I looked up first on Reddit and other forums to read about uh, people's experience on AMD. At this point, I was really hesitating and I wasn't sure if I wanted to buy from them, but hey, if um if this thing is here right now it's because i bought one so for the past three months i've been using an amd card and let me say that it's not what i thought it was in a good way so sit back get yourself comfy at home because today i'm going to answer the question once and for all are amd gpus actually good or bad for vr and flat screen I'm going to divide this video in three sections. The first one will speak about the important specs of the graphics card. Second section will speak about the experience using the graphics card on a regular gaming and day-to-day -day task. I'm also going to include the driver experience. And last but not least, how does it perform in virtual reality titles? Before going to the product or anything related to it, I need to say that I'm pretty much new to reviewing computer and tech related stuff. I have so much fun doing this, but if I end up having something wrong in anything that I said, just comment down and uh, I'll make sure to correct it. Now that is out of the way, I'm finally ready to speak about this. So what I have is an AMD Radeon RX 7900 GRE from Gigabyte. It's apparently able to be the 4070 Super and be close to the TI model according to Gamer Nexus. And all of this comes down to the same price of the 4070. So you know how much this probably means for us buyers. A 4070 Super can cost around 560 USD, while the 4070 Super cost around 610 USD. So that is around a $50 difference. We have been arguing a lot about the high prices of NVIDIA graphics card and AMD might just make it less worse for us. We have also been arguing about the fact that lower end NVIDIA cards don't have a lot of video random access memory or in shorter terms VRAM. VRAM works the same way as a normal RAM would do, but it takes care of saving textures for the GPU to access it later. Some sources claim that 8GB might not be enough for future games. In the PC building world, VRAM helps a lot when it comes to having higher resolution textures and future proofing your PC. The advantage for using higher VRAM in VR, especially in VR chat, is that it allows your system to load more avatars without crashing because very poor avatars have ginormous texture sizes. Well, there's AMD that sells a 330 US dollar graphics card with 16 gigabyte of VRAM. But the reason AMD is able to sell a 16 gigabyte GPU for such a low price, well, it's because Nvidia got higher VRAM speed than AMD. Some games can benefit from higher speeds, but others can benefit from more VRAM. Now, doing the setup of this thing wasn't really hard for me. Uh, when I first did the setup of my AMD GPU, I came from an uh, NVIDIA unit. So I had to uninstall the NVIDIA drivers using the DDU uninstaller program. When you uninstall a graphics card driver from Windows, the program might leave some config files or other things in your computer. The DDU uninstaller can get rid of all of these files so they can't corrupt 
DMD drivers that I was going to install later. Afterwards, I just removed the older graphics card I had and inserted the new one into the PCIe slot in my computer. When I booted my computer, I went to the AMD website to install the AMD drivers. For my review, I'll be using the version 24.5.1 and as this video is out, I don't guarantee the same experience and interface on newer versions. If you are watching this video in like two years or three years from when it was released. And uh, yeah, that's it. I can technically use my computer as normal again. So first thing I want to talk about is the AMD drivers. I am going to be really honest about this, but I think that AMD Adrenaline software is, in my opinion, way better than the NVIDIA control panel. Let me show you around. So first of all, when you open the driver interface, you're greeted with this super nice dashboard. From here, you can see stats about the specs of your computer. You can see your FPS if you have a loaded game. You can have four presets of settings for games and last but not least you can also record your gameplay if we move to the gaming tab uh, we can see our games that we played with the time and average fps that we get if we click on one game for example we can set some settings like adding uh, frame generation, radiant chill, anti-lag, you can also change color settings, and way more. And all of these settings that you set up will be applied to the single game that you have selected. Moving to the graphics tab, you kind of have the same thing here. You can pick four presets of settings. The first one is made to improve performance. Second one will be focused towards quality third one uh saves power and last but not least there is also the default settings which leaves everything off when you go on advisors uh, this will just give you warnings when your games are performing worse than they should be and it gives you recommendations of settings according to the situation. I'm going to be honest, 90% of the time is just going to tell you to lower your settings, but it's here, I guess. Going to the record and stream tab, the features are really straightforward, but there is a one thing that AMD has that NVIDIA kind of lacks off, and this is the scene editor. NVIDIA doesn't really have a scene editor but amd has which is kind of cool there's also an instant replay feature that you can find here this feature allows you to make clips of your gameplay you can choose to record it on your disc or your ram there is a bunch of also other settings that you can change for uh recording and streaming but i won't really get into all of this uh these are really usual uh record options that you can change on OBS or pretty much any other streaming or recording software. On the performance tab here, you can get a lot of information on all of these things. FPS, latency, GPU, GPU memory, CPU, and also system memory. There's also an overlay that you can enable to kind of benchmark your computer when you run certain games. If we go into tuning here, you can do some overclocking and also here change uh, the fan curve for the GPU if you want. And there is also the smart access memory feature. I personally always leave it on because more FPS, I guess. You have uh, also smart technology here, but I use none of those features that are presented. And yeah, that is pretty much everything uh, when it comes to the drivers. Drivers are great and they work, but what about using this GPU to play regular games? Well, it also works. Though, when it comes to regular gaming, there is one and only one setting you need to look out for, and that is ray tracing. Even though AMD supports ray tracing, they're not really the best when it comes to it. Nvidia handles ray tracing way better than AMD. And it's some games where you want to max out the settings. Ray tracing is a good way to make the frame rate really low or barely playable. If anyone here plays Fortnite or played Fortnite, 
you probably know about Nanite or Lumen. Both of these features involve ray tracing. At first, I didn't understand why my frame rate was so low. I thought it was the fact that the drivers were not optimized for this game. But I tried turning off Nanite and Lumen and now I had an experience on ultra settings that met my expectations. Other than that, any other game performed as expected and I had no issue running them whatsoever. If ever I am experiencing other issues like these, I'll make sure to update it in the comments. So yes, AMD works well on your regular activities, but I'm not here for that. I'm here when it comes to virtual reality. It's a product that works well with VR, but there are still some things to look out when messing with the settings. First of all, if you're planning to play on an Oculus Rift or you're going to use any headset with the Meta Quest Link app, I've tried playing Beat Saber on my Oculus Rift S and around every two or three minutes, I would get stutter in my frame rate. Others have also addressed this issue already and the fix for this is trying to disable a synchronous space warp. I've tried myself to disable this in the Oculus debug tool which is located in a specific folder in the program files. I've tried to disable it and restart the game and I still had the same issues. The issue for me was a VR mode Oculus which makes your game launch without the Steam VR app if you have a VR game in your Steam VR library. In that case, it was Beat Saber. If I play Beat Saber with Steam VR, it works and also playing the Oculus version of Beat Saber also works fine for me. So if you're not touching VR mode Oculus like I did, it works pretty good. Though if you want to use AMD while playing wireless VR, the experience is pretty good. For users that use Steam Link, as far as I know, there's actually nothing to change in the settings to get the best experience. In Virtual Desktop though, the only thing to look out for is both ASW in the Virtual Desktop setting and also having an encoding format that doesn't have 10-bit encoding. That is if you use a 6000 series card or older. For people who use a Steam VR headset like the Valve Index or the HTC Vive bulb, Steam VR works like a charm. One thing that I personally had to do to make my experience better is to quit Razer Central and Razer Synapse. While in Beat Saber and other games that require really stable frames, I always had some tiny hitchings in frame rate. So if you are experiencing this, try quitting IQ, G-Hub or Synapse or other apps that manage your peripherals. Other than that, there's nothing to really talk about. To finish, I wanted to try Half-Life Alex because this game looks really good and I want to see how far I can push the settings. So I first tried to play with 90 Hertz of refresh rate and it was working really well. The frame rate was really stable while I was playing on ultra preset at 150% of super sampling. Next, I wanted to push the refresh rate to its absolute max and see how the GPU can handle it. I am using a valve index so 144 hertz is the maximum that I can go. I kind of knew already that the 7900 GRE would have a little bit more trouble running at this kind of refresh rate and uh, I was right. When I jump into the game we can see that the frame time graph that the GPU has a little bit of trouble keeping up when I move or change my viewing direction. When I used the joystick to move, the movement felt more stuttery. I just felt more inconsistency in frames at 144 Hz. When I played, I had 100% super sampling and I was playing on medium preset. Remember about the fact that I'm recording and also the fact that I have a current bottleneck with my processor. So the numbers could be higher than what I've shown. The sweet spot for smoothness and performance for me was in 120Hz. The experience felt smooth most of the time and I didn't have any major frame drops. I wanted to put the render resolution to 200% super sampling. And when I did, I didn't notice a huge performance impact. I am probably not the best when it comes to benchmarking games and it wasn't really my goal either. If you're interested in having more detailed benchmarks in VR for this exact GPU that I'm holding, Marakshot is probably the only YouTuber that does AMD benchmarks in VR. I will leave the link to his 7900 GRE benchmark in the description. So that's literally everything. Conclusion, 
I thought at first that my experience would be limited due to compatibility issues. Let me say that it was not the case on my side. We're currently at the end of 2024 and I personally think we can look and now consider AMD again when it comes to building a gaming PC for VR or not. Because I know that AMD had some issues in the past. As of right now, I think AMD has fixed most of these issues in 2024. And after trying AMD, the only reason I would consider Nvidia in my opinion is for AI, ray tracing, and also frame generation. These features work better when you own an Nvidia card. And when it comes especially to ray tracing, it's not even a battle. Seeing the 7000 series being really good right now, it just makes me excited for the budget 8000 series that will apparently be revealed and out in 2025. I'll probably make a YouTube video trying a lower end 8000 series card if that's something that you guys are interested in. Why is the majority of people aiding on AMD GPUs? I've tried to understand and um, I actually don't know anymore because in my opinion, they're missing on saving money and having more VRAM. You probably don't get the ray tracing performance that Nvidia offers, but I don't really use ray tracing at all, or it's at least a setting that I don't mind turning off for me. If you're someone that has never touched graphic settings and driver settings and doesn't feel comfortable learning what these things do, I would probably stick with the green team. But Nvidia kind of needs to watch out for AMD because it has the potential and the price the performance of this thing is really good so let me know what you guys think about it in the comments because i'm open to getting more of your opinions on your experience with amd if any of you tried it as of this right here that thing will stay in my computer and will hopefully stay for the upcoming years i am happy to say that i'm going to use this gpu daily for all my activities regarding vr and content creation so that's it i'm going to end this video by saying that i now launched a discord server for everyone if they want to speak about anything related to vr or wants to play VR games together and speak about gaming PCs. You can get notified for my new videos when they come out or also my Twitch streams if you want to come and say hi. And I also will probably do some events in VR chat in the future. The server along with all my other socials would be posted in the descriptions. So thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.